President of the United States. You're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide, by the way. Like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. Patreon.com slash House Parks. And uh, there's the Venmo over there if you want to buy me a cup of coffee. And uh, thank you, Tobias, for the super chat. And thank you, uh, Ed Bailey. Um, uh, I did that one already. And then uh, there was one more I missed down earlier. Uh, Barbara, thank you so much. And, and JD, there you go. States. At Title IX, part of the Civil Rights Act, has always been intended to protect women's sports, to make sure they're fully funded, to give women an opportunity. And so Kamala Harris and Biden, they change it with an executive order. It's a law. They change it. And a federal judge just ruled, uh, hold on, you don't get to do that. So my question to you is this. How is it that they can claim that they're for women's rights when they're destroying the key act that protects women's sports, girls' sports, something that's been in existence for half a century, yet they claim they're for women's rights? Well, oh, because uh, the inclusion of trans women into women's sports eventually, and there should be standards, which is fine, um, is... Uh, predicated to growth in the society, and we're finally kind of catching up to that part. But previous to that, um, Donald Trump eliminated a woman's right to choose, and therefore women are now second-class citizens because they have to pick which state they want to live in by what rights they want to enjoy, and men don't have to do that. Something like that? Well, they're really demeaning women, and they're... And that's my job. ...marginalizing women. Which is, again, my job. See, she steals everything of mine. W uh, this... Recently, a volleyball, a female volleyball player, a very good player, All-American or something, got hit by a shot from a person who transitioned. And this person said, I've never seen anything, a ball come at me like that. I've been blind. Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> volleyball? What are you talking about? Playing all my life. I'm a champion player. And it knocked her out, and she's not going to play anymore. Um, um, is it, is she not going to play anymore because she's a bigot, or? You know, you say when you, when I, Also, I don't know, it didn't happen. I don't know, he's talking out of his ass. I hear, there are different things, different signs, open borders, defund the police. Oh, by the way, the, the, him... Talking about um, men and women's sports is not working. It's not moving the ball anymore because it's clear nobody is for the uh, forcible transition of children and any of this shit they were talking about. And so it's, it's got no runway to use to borrow from the last bullshit answer. So he's, uh, he's trying to drop it or move around it. He thinks the border and people's fear of brown people and black people specifically coming across the southern border with bags of drugs and, and child sex trafficking at the same time is, is the main thing he's going to run on. That's what he thinks will get him over the line. Men playing in women's sports, all different levels of problem. But they don't make sense. Who would want this? Who would want open borders where people come in from prisons, jails, and men? Nobody. Nobody wants that. No, that's not what's going on. Mental institution. I don't know. By the way, I don't know. Why would you stop a bill that would limit it at all? Even if it wasn't perfect. If you could cut it in half, why would you not do that? Who would who would have an open border, have an opportunity to close it partially or even, you know, all the way sometimes and pass that up? Who would do that? Who would do such a thing? Who would put their political capital on the line in an election year and say, you know what? Fuck it. Who would do that? And terrorists openly just walk into the country from places unknown. Who would want that? Well, I, I, I have to say, it's hard. If they're from places unknown, how would anybody know they were terrorists or anybody? Because you don't even know why they're coming here if you don't know where they're from. Who would want that? Who would want men playing in women's sports? Very simple. Who would want? Nobody does. But trans women aren't men, especially if they're biologically transitioning and they're uh, they're on hormones and all the other stuff that would limit stuff. Now, again, it's a matter of time. There should be standards. I understand that. You can't just let somebody self-identify and pop from sport to sport or whatever, and uh, it doesn't work that way. 
It shouldn't work that way. I think you can have a standard and it's okay, but it doesn't mean you rule it out 100% just to be a bigot, which is what they want. Uh, all electric cars, and Elon's a great friend of mine. I think he's phenomenal. I love the electric cars. I think they're great, but there's a place for them, and then there's a place for gas-propelled, gasoline-propelled cars. And they- There are no gas-propelled cars. That They don't light gas out of a tank and flame comes out the ass like a the Batmobile, dum dum. It's a combustion engine. It doesn't propel it. It pushes the cylinders actually uh, per- uh, it, like, perpendicular to the direction of the car. For the record, the propulsion in a combustion engine is perpendicular to the direction of the vehicle. This pro- this motherfucker probably thinks propulsion is is done by propane. Honestly. There's a place for hybrids, they buy everything. And they have a mandate, but we don't make enough electricity. So what are they going to do? And uh, they're restarting some of the nuclear reactors. They're building thorium reactors and then wind and solar and a smart grid and geothermal will pass electricity throughout the country and be able to measure it out so that everybody has access to it except Texas, because I guess they want to be fucked. And, but, you know, who would create this mandate where they want to make trucks all electric, but the trucks would have to stop six times to get charged? Again, uh, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Um, He does realize that Tesla has a, uh, like a Mack truck. From New York to Los Angeles. Also, how many times do you think a fucking, do you think a truck drives itself? For the record, I would like to say, I don't want a truck driver to stay awake driving a truck all the way from New York to L.A. I think you should get a a couple of nights sleep. I'm just saying. As opposed to no times, if you have diesel, with diesel, the truck gets lighter and lighter as it goes along. (laughs) Yes, as what? You mean as it runs out of fuel? Uh, with the electric, the battery is so big, it would take half the payload. You'd have to rebuild every bridge and roadway in America. No, you wouldn't. To carry the weight. No, No, you wouldn't. I think of that. You know, it sounds like a simple statement, but just, and I said to him, you know, don't you, because I met with all the truckers, they're going to be out of business with this whole thing. Why? Why would they be out of business? What do you think shit doesn't just, I I don't understand where, you think the stuff doesn't need to get there? And you talk about supply chain, wait till you see this. Oh yeah. I said to him, so how long have you been in business? He said 50 years. Yeah, and nobody who's been in business for 50 years doing the same thing hates new technology or change. I'm still mad about them taking the lead out. So, uh, he said, you know, I started off with one truck. I think it's 29,000 now, like one of the biggest, right? From one truck to 29, you know that type of guy. I mean, amazing. But So he's got an investment in all these trucks and he doesn't want some upstart to be able to buy cheaper trucks that go longer, that have more safety features on them, that pull just as much stuff, have higher torque and a, and a lower cost ratio. Because he's got to start from scratch. He's got this 29,000 truck investment and somebody could come along and buy 6,000 trucks and be in business and biting at his heels by the time they have 10. Right? He said, every single year I bought trucks, I always bought them and they got better and better. They got stronger. They got uh, bigger. They got more beautiful. They got much more efficient. To a point where we have things that are so good now, you'd be proud to live in them. He said, we build apartments in the back. You know, they they call it an apartment in the back. You ever notice? Oh, yeah. These guys live in there. Yeah, they call it an apartment. That's where they sleep while the car continues to drive. He said, sir, I know you're rich, but you'd be proud to live. I said, I don't know. (laughs) But he said they just got so good. Yeah, most of them are soundproof now. Like, serial killers love them. And if they forced us to go to electric trucks, nobody would be able to do it economically. But if they forced us to go, we would go back 60 years because we wouldn't be able to drive. We'd have to stop. Think of it. 
Six stops versus no stops. So right there, it doesn't work, okay? So hold on. No, driving from New York to Los Angeles without stopping doesn't work. You asshole. What are you talking about? There is no way. Is this, okay, the only thing that can explain this is this asshole, you're talking about flyover country. There's, this motherfucker has never been anywhere where there are trucks for more than an hour. Because I got news for you. When I drive back and forth to LA, um, it, you know, I'll, I'll go in on, uh, for example, uh, coming up on the 17th, uh, the Ultimate Jam Night, we're doing the 27 Club. Um, people who unfortunately passed away, big artists that died at 27, a bunch of them, and uh, we're celebrating all of their voices and their music during that time. Um, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, uh, Janis Joplin, um, Amy Winehouse, like that that crowd, like they all died at 27. Uh, Jim Morrison. Um, <clears throat> so we're doing that show, all right? So I'll drive in in the morning, more than likely. I'll do the show, and then sometimes I'll stay overnight and come back the next day. But most of the time, because I have a show in the morning with you guys, I get in my car at midnight, and I drive back to Vegas. And I sleep for a couple hours, do my morning show, sleep a little bit more, do the afternoon show, and then get kind of back to normal by the next day. When I'm driving back at night, in the middle of the fucking night, um, there are trucks lining the roads because they have pulled over to go to sleep. And they're not, they didn't drive from fucking Hawaii. They're leaving LA. They have driven in this direction at this hour from wherever they, they either drove in, did a little bit, started heading back. And on, you know, right about that time, they need some sleep. They pull over on the side of the road and they sleep till morning for hours. If they did that at a charging station, their vehicle would be charged and it wouldn't cost them anything. They would get, it, it costs like $4 to refuel the fucking vehicle while they're sleeping. By the way, they can't sleep while the truck is being refueled but with gas. It's so stupid. Right there. New York to Los Angeles. Six stops versus no stops. And they want to put these guys out of business. And so I like to say the Republican Party has become, yeah, we're conservative. We're this, we're that. We're, all we're the common sense party. A lot of things. But it's basically the party of common sense. We need. Okay, you dumb motherfucker. Common sense says that no human being alone can drive from New York to Los Angeles without taking a nap. It's common sense. You're going to have to stop, you absolute fuckhead. What are you talking about? Common sense. Come, you're going to have to fuel the vehicle sometime. If you could fuel it while you were sleeping, that'd be a lot better than fueling it while you're awake. If you could do it well, every time you take a nap, you just pull over to, at, a, at a refueling station or an electric station and you charge up while you're napping and then you just keep fucking going. Why wouldn't you? Holy shit. Common sense says that's actually preferable. Good Lord. Just so fucking stupid. And again... This is um, this is the difference between common sense and, and and like common beliefs or common understandings, which are often mistaken. Common sense is based on you have real information and the best way to fix something. It may not be the most efficient, but it is the way that works the best most times. That's not what this is at all. This is just he has he has no fucking idea. None. There's nothing common sense about somebody driving from New York to Los Angeles without taking a nap. I, I, honestly, this you, tell me you've never been driven across country or, or driven across country yourself in a, a, a quicker. Because this asshole, he's basically saying, I've been on a plane. You fly from one side of the country. You, you know, you fly from one end of the country. It's not that big. You just go. He, if he goes to, from New York to LA, he's never driven it. I've driven it. I, that's another, okay, chat room. I love you guys. Hold on one second. Um, chat room, real quick. Who here has done, if not the entire country across, a major drive from, I mean, we're talking like Seattle to Texas or New York to Florida or, or you know, East Coast, West Coast, uh, you know, East Coast to the Rockies, West Coast to fucking Chicago, Whatever. 
Yes, New Orleans to Vermont. That's great. Absolutely. Every, every, Ohio to L.A. Yes. <laughs> Chicago to L.A., Kentucky to L.A. Been there, right? Okay. All, almost everybody in here that's an American who's in my chat has done some version of that drive, right? And usually do it with a, per, if you're driving straight through with, you know, somebody else is driving with you, right? Either pull over and sleep or you have, you take, you, you take turns like dumb and dumber. Um, yeah. OC Maryland to Denver, uh, Texas to Seattle. There you go. Who else? Uh, New York to Florida. Um, Boston to Michigan. That's rock solid. <laughs> Sparks to St. Louis. There you go. Vegas to Chicago. Minneapolis to Chicago. Or, uh, sorry, Minneapolis to where was that? San Jose. There you go. Um, uh, Massachusetts to Cal- California. That's the that's the drive. Okay. Everybody in here. I, a DC to friend. <laughs> yeah, that's solid. That's, a, that's the length of it. Donald Trump has never done that. Think of all the experiences you had doing that. Think of all the, you know, the places you saw, the places you went, the, the depth of the experience, even if you did it straight through where you would stop for a night, stay at a little hotel, move on a little bit, find someplace funky to eat, go see the giant ball of string, whatever the fuck you did. Donald Trump has never done that. First of all, he can't drive a car. He doesn't know how to drive a car. He can't drive a car. He doesn't have a driver's license. He can't drive a car. Donald Trump can't drive a car. So fuck anybody who thinks he understands what your life is like. He can't drive a car. He doesn't know what it's like to be in traffic. He doesn't know what it's like any except other than being a passenger where it's somebody else's problem. And that's not the same fucking thing. He certainly doesn't know what it's like to be driving as a father with your kids in the vehicle and traffic all around and all the stuff, all the stress that goes with that. Or as a parent in general, right? He, he has no fucking idea how any of that works. And so... He has no idea what a trucker goes through, much less a, somebody in a commuter car, somebody just a regular average driver. No idea. He doesn't know how any of it fucking works. Donald Trump, you know how he's always talking about, like, I could pass a, uh, we should have a, you know, a, like an IQ test or whatever to become president or, a, you know, I'm, uh, they say I'm not uh, cognitive. I take a cognitive, right, when he's saying that shit. He couldn't pass a driver's test in any state in the country. He's got houses in three states with the properties. I don't know that they're technically houses. Most of them, it's just him staying on in, on these uh, rental properties. But he wouldn't, he couldn't pass the driving test in any of the states he technically lives in. Not a one, not a fucking one. So I don't want to hear anything about this asshole being common sense man of the people ever again from anybody. Fuck off. He can't drive a car. He's never been in traffic. He's never driven um, his family on a road trip. He couldn't if he wanted to. He he legally can't. He intellectually and morally shouldn't be allowed to do it because he's obviously incapable of understanding the flow of traffic or how any of this shit works. And And his judgment is such that he thinks you should be able to drive from New York to Los Angeles without taking a nap. He's a fucking dipshit and what what this also says what this also says is this dumb motherfucker thinks your life is that easy he thinks these guys get in a fucking truck and they just drive and then you know then they're just there they just show up he doesn't have any of the idea of what they go through traffic weather any of the shit as they're going across the country Right? He's, he's never been in that. Okay, here's a good example, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, shit. This, this one. Never had this experience. He's never had this experience. You ever been in that situation where the road is narrowing, you're driving, and finally it's down where you're in one lane on a highway in between uh, cement barriers, the construction barriers, and it's super fucking tight, and you feel like you're in an X Wing fighter, and you're like, stay on target, stay on target. And it's the, the flow of traffic is pretty fucking fast maybe even uncomfortably so, and it's dark or there's any kind of fog or whatever, and you're in a fucking trench with every other car in in front of you and behind, yes, and it's raining. You ever been there? We've all been there. But Okay, chat room, I love you guys, but look, look at this. How many of you have been there? 
It's but it's fucking terrifying. It's awful. It's the worst part of, of being a road comic, you know, that I've ever experienced with it. And and Chris Bono can attest. We've been in a car together so many times where it just got down to that. It was just fucking awful. And there's trucks ahead of you that you know can't fucking see you, and you don't know when it ends, right? And this is now that at least you have like your like your fucking phone can tell you this goes on for three miles. Doesn't make it any less terrifying while you're in it, but at least lets you know that there's going to be an off-ramp to it eventually, whereas before it's just a map and you have no fucking idea for years, right? When this guy would have been driving his family around, when he was, you know, when he was a relative young man, when, when Don and Eric were relatively young, right? He never did that. He's never had that experience. You have, I have, everybody I fucking know has. That motherfucker has never experienced that in his life. He can't even wrap his fucking head around it as an experience. And so what he thinks is, you're full of shit. You don't know what you're talking about. You have an easy life. You guys don't know the pressure of anything. You don't have to deal with anything. He's always a passenger in these situations. Somebody send me a... Um, Hold on. Someone was, thank you, Patreon. Um, oh my gosh, Francis, thank you so much. That's so sweet for the Venmo. Yeah. That's, thank you so much for the super chat and the Venmo, you know, because that's, uh, it's adorable. Thank you. Um, but that matters. It really does matter. That's why he thinks it's so much, it's so easy. He thinks these truckers can just drive across the country because he has no idea the detail of any of it. He has no experience at all that he can share with you and I in this regard. At all. Never has. Never fucking will. Because God willing, I'm never going to know what it's like to be inside a prison cell. <laughs> but um, I, I, I have to say, in my life, I have eaten at a fine restaurant or two, and I have partaken of their finest foods uh, in a couple of situations. I've never asked them to make me a well-done steak in a fancy place and covered it in ketchup like an asshole. Um, and maybe that's because in my life, I've had to drive when I'm tired or I need to get someplace for work or I'm, you know, or in bad weather or any of those kind of things. So that when I get someplace, I actually want my life to be enjoyable and meaningful and and have connections with the people around me because I know that it's not guaranteed. This motherfucker has lived a life of nothing but guarantees his whole fucking life. Ugh. We need fair elections, we need walls, or we need to stop, we need borders. We, need we have a border, we have a wall in places. Play, a part of the wall that he created, created an access road that made it easier for people to traverse. Walls. You know, the two things that work walls and wheels, fuck off, because the Democrats, even to this to nowadays say it, oh, Kamala didn't want walls at all. She didn't want walls. She fought me harder than anybody. She was always fighting me on the walls. I ended up taking the money from the military because I said, right. Yeah, because Mexico told you to go fuck yourself. I mean, just that just that phrase alone. Hey, hey maggots. I know there's a couple in there. There's occasionally a couple maggots in here. Cause scoot in. Listen to what he said there. She was always fighting me on the walls. I ended up taking the money from the military because I said. Mm hmm. He ended up taking it from the military. To build a wall. Yeah. Why, why would you do that? I thought Mexico was going to pay for it 100 percent. He led you assholes in chants about Mexico. Who's going to pay for it? Mexico. 100 percent. Right. That was one of the like the best timed parts of his rally. He had it so tight after a while because they'd done it so much that you motherfuckers would say Mexico and he'd say 100% again and again and again and again. And then how do you end up paying for it? Took it from money allocated for uh, soldiers here at home and their families, their education, their, their health care, all that kind of stuff. That, that allocated money for our bases. Took base money. Where did he not get it from? Mexico. 